Welcome to another Hearts of Iron 4 Beginner's Guide. I am Bridger, and today we're going to explore division statistics and the land combat system. Recall that in a previous episode we discussed how you add combat battalions and support companies to a division, which determines all of its statistics, including its combat performance and the equipment that the division will need. Today we learn what those statistics mean and how the land combat system uses them to calculate the results of combat. Let's start by looking at those statistics. Max speed is of course the speed at which your division will move under ideal conditions. Note, support companies do not affect the speed of your division at all, and this is one way to add artillery or anti-tank assets to your fast divisions without slowing them down. The next two statistics, organization and HP, are two different ways of measuring how well your unit can fight. Think of organization as the stamina of your division. It determines how long your division will fight in a battle, but doesn't affect your actual performance in the combat. If your division only has 30% of its maximum organization, it does not experience any penalty to combat, but it is likely to retreat much sooner than an equivalent division with full organization. HP is short for hit points, and sometimes is referred to as strength. Unlike organization, when your division suffers HP damage, it becomes less capable in combat. Specifically, if your division is not at 100% strength, it will do less damage and take more damage in combat. The bigger the deficit, the bigger this penalty will be. A division with only 25% strength will have its attack and defense reduced down to 25% of its normal size. These two statistics are so important that they are visible on the map and in the unit panel on the left for each division. Looking at these bars can tell you how your divisions are doing. Green is organization, and orange is HP. Full bars means your divisions are ready for combat. If the organization bar is low, it means your divisions need time to rest and organize. If the strength bar is low, it means your divisions need equipment or replacements, both of which will be automatically delivered over time if they are available in your reserves. Also note that a unit can only have full HP if it is able to acquire its full equipment complement. Therefore, it's possible for a newly deployed unit to be under strength even if it has never seen combat. In combat, both your HP and organization will take damage. If your HP hits zero, it means you've lost all the men or equipment in your division and the few people left will have to retreat. If your organization hits zero, it means that command and control has broken down or your men are too exhausted to continue fighting and have to retreat. Due to the way that statistics are derived, a division's maximum organization will almost always be lower than its maximum HP. In addition, organization takes roughly 60% more damage than HP for any given hit. The result is that you will almost always see organization reduced to zero before HP is reduced to zero. This is why a bonus to the organization of your division is very valuable. Next, recovery rate denotes the amount of organization your division will gain every hour when it's not in combat. Reconnaissance is primarily provided by recon support companies. Whichever side has a higher recon in a battle has the best chance of countering the enemy tactic. We will explain tactics later in this video. Suppression indicates how well this division can reduce resistance in occupied territory. All cavalry battalions can provide two suppression, infantry battalions provide one suppression, and all armored battalions provide no suppression at all. A military police support company can improve this value. Weight determines how many transports are required to move this division across the sea or, in the case of paratroopers, through the air. Supply use describes how many supply points the division consumes. Consider this carefully when creating divisions that will be fighting in low supply areas. Reliability. This stat is a bit confusing. All types of equipment have their own reliability rating. This factors into how much equipment is lost when the division takes attrition from any source. Higher reliability means less equipment is lost. The most common sources of attrition include moving or fighting in bad weather or bad terrain, but your divisions will also take attrition when performing military exercises. However, the reliability stat in this division description does not detail the reliability of the equipment or the division in general. That information is found elsewhere. Instead, this displays the boost in reliability provided by any battalions or companies in the division. Normally, this number is zero, but if you have a maintenance support company, it will boost the reliability of all equipment in the division, and that is represented here. 
Trickleback and experience loss are always zero unless you have attached a field hospital support company to your division. If you have one, you will lose less experience and manpower during combat. In addition to your organization and HP, which determine how long a division lasts in combat, these combat stats will determine your division's damage output and how much damage your division takes in combat. Soft attack indicates how many attacks your division will perform per hour against soft targets like infantry, motorized, or artillery. Hard attack indicates how many attacks your division will perform per hour against hard targets like armor or mechanized divisions. Air attack describes how much damage this division can inflict when it is participating in combat in which enemy air units are providing ground support. Defense and breakthrough are two sides of the same coin. When your division is defending a piece of territory and the enemy division comes in and attacks it, the defense statistic indicates how well your division can avoid taking damage to its HP and organization. When your division is attacking into enemy territory, the breakthrough stat is instead used to determine how well your division can avoid taking damage. Infantry and mobile infantry battalions have high defense, while armor battalions have a high breakthrough. Armor and piercing are related to one another. During battle, your division's armor is compared to the piercing value of the opposing division. If your armor is higher, your division will do 50% more organization damage to that enemy and take 50% less organization and strength damage. This is a fairly significant bonus, and it's one of the main reasons that armor battalions are valuable. Initiative is provided by signal support companies and allows divisions to move from the reserves into combat faster. Entrenchment increases defenses while stationary and is provided by the Engineer Support Company. Combat width is a very important concept that we will return to in a later video. In addition to these stats, the bar underneath provides an important statistic called hardness. A division with high hardness takes more hard attacks from its enemies, while a division with low hardness takes more soft attacks. What does this mean? Well, the majority of battalions in the game have a much higher soft attack value than hard attack. This means having a high hardness is a good thing. It results in your division suffering fewer overall attacks most of the time. The exceptions to this are the dedicated anti-tank guns, tank destroyers, towed anti-air, and heavy tanks. Keep in mind that support companies do not have a hardness rating and as a result do not factor in to a division's hardness. Now that we have a handle on what all the stats do, let's talk about how they're calculated and how those calculations affect your design. We already talked about max speed, it's simply equal to the slowest battalion. Now these stats are all purely additive. Whenever you add a new battalion or company that has one of these stats, it's simply added to the total. More is more. These two are an average of all the different combat battalions and support companies in your division. Infantry and mobile infantry have high organization, but most support companies and armor have low organization, and every other battalion has zero organization. The fact that organization is an average means you'll always want some form of infantry in your divisions to provide staying power during combat. This brings us to the odd couple. Armor and piercing are weighted averages of all combat battalions. The exact formula for armor is, take 30% of the armor value from the highest armor battalion, then add it to 70% of the average for the whole division. In this example, the highest armor comes from these medium tank battalions, which are currently representing Panzer III's. Panzer III's have an armor rating of 60, so we take 30% of 60 and get 18. Then we find the average of all the combat battalions and support companies together, which comes to 27.7. When we multiply that by 70%, now we add those two numbers together to get the final value of 37.3. One of the results of this weighting is that adding support companies to your armor divisions can water down their armor. So think hard before you fill them up with awesome support companies. Piercing is derived the same way, except that it is weighted at 40% of the highest piercing plus 60% of the average of all battalions and companies. This weighting means that the first battalion with a high armor or piercing value that you add to your division gives you the most effect. The rest only add marginal gains to the armor and piercing statistics. We'll discuss how this affects your division design in the next video. 
So now that we have an understanding of what each of the stats do, let's put them all together and examine how land combat is actually calculated. First, it's important to understand that combat is fought in rounds that are one hour long. So after a day of combat, there will have been 24 rounds fought between the participating divisions. During each of these rounds, conditions can change. The weather could change, one side could receive reinforcements, or a division might run out of organization and retreat from the battle, or maybe an air unit might provide ground support. All of these are checked every hour, and the bonuses and penalties associated are adjusted for the next round of combat. But we're going to ignore all the various bonuses for now and look at the pure combat system. When you click on a battle icon, it opens the detailed combat window, giving you access to a lot of valuable information. You can see our division and its adjusted combat stats listed here. The stats listed for the Japanese attacker are soft attacks, hard attacks, and breakthrough. The Chinese division also lists its soft attack, hard attack, and defense value. Recall that the Japanese division uses its breakthrough instead of defense because it is the initiator of this combat. We left our territory and assaulted into Chinese territory. That makes us the attacker, and as a result, we use the breakthrough value in combat instead of our defense value. During each hour-long round, both the attacker and the defender will attempt to damage each other. Let's examine this in detail. First, we need to know how many shots our division is going to take at the opponent. In this example, both the Japanese division and the Chinese division have a hardness of 0% which means that the number of shots these divisions are going to attempt is equal to 100% of the soft attack value. Every shot attempted by our Japanese division can potentially be blocked by the Chinese unit's defense pool. The Chinese division has 46 defenses in this example, which means that they will be able to block 46 of our shots. Since we have 84 shots, 46 of them will be blocked and 38 will be unblocked. A blocked shot has a 10% chance to damage the enemy, while an unblocked shot has a 40% chance of damaging the enemy. The final result, then, is that about 10% of our blocked shots will hit, and 40% of our unblocked shots will hit, for a total of about 20 shots dealing damage to the Chinese division. Each shot that hits does a small amount of random damage to the Chinese division's HP, and about 60% more damage to the division's organization. The exact same system is used in reverse to calculate the damage that the Chinese unit inflicts on the Japanese unit, except that the number of blocks the attacker gets is equal to the breakthrough value instead of the defense value. Both the attacker and defender shots are calculated simultaneously, and the damage is then applied simultaneously. Let's take a look at a slightly more complex situation. In this example, our German division has some armor, which will give it a bit of an advantage it will attempt its full soft attack value of shots at the Polish unit just like before. The Polish unit will again be able to block using its defense value just like before. This will then calculate the total number of shots that hit the target just like before. Only this time, the damage done to the Polish unit's organization is increased by 50% because our German unit has an armor value that is higher than the Polish unit's piercing value. Now let's look at this from the point of view of the defending Polish unit. Calculating the number of shots they get is slightly more complex. Our German division has a 43% hardness rating, which means the total number of shots from the Polish division is equal to 43% of their hard attacks plus 57% of their soft attacks for a total of 27 attacks. This is a much lower number than 42, which is the number of shots that they would get against a unit with 0% hardness. Since our breakthrough value of 477 is much higher than their 27 shots, all of their shots will be blocked, and only about 3 will get to do damage. Even then, because they cannot pierce our armor, the damage these 3 successful hits inflict is reduced by 50%. This example demonstrates why high armor can be very beneficial. Let's take a quick tour around the combat window to find out what bonuses are affecting this combat in addition to the armor bonus. We can see two other markers here denoting the decryption advantage for the Germans and a penalty to the Poles due to German air superiority. We can also hover over the skill ratings of the generals to see that our general is providing the German division with a slightly higher boost to its attack and defense value, which includes our breakthrough value. You can also see that each of these generals has a number of traits affecting the battle. Finally, there are tactics which have been chosen by each general. 
These tactics are re-chosen every 24 hours. Having a high reconnaissance value increases the chance that your general will play a special counter tactic which will negate the enemy's tactic. There is no way for you as a player to choose these tactics, but you can, however, unlock better tactics by researching your land doctrines. In this example, the German commander has the initiative, which is due to having a superior recon stat in the armor division. This will allow him a second chance at defeating the enemy's tactic with his own. Last but not least, we have combat width. Recall that combat width for a division is simply a sum of the combat width of all of the battalions that make up your division. Most battalions have between 1 and 3 combat width. Within the context of this battle, you can see that the combat width totals for each side is listed here. We have three divisions with a total width of 54, and the Poles have one division with a total of 18 width. The current battle has a max width of 80. That means that if either side's combat width total exceeds 80, they will get penalties to their combat effectiveness, which scales based on how far over the limit that side is. The AI generals will manage this for you and judge if it is worth keeping some divisions in reserve to avoid exceeding the combat width and hitting that penalty. The default combat width is 80, and each additional province the attacker comes from increases the combat width by 40. This means if you have a numerical superiority and want to take advantage of it, you need to attack a province from as many directions as possible. Combat width can also sometimes fluctuate based on the tactics chosen by the generals. Any divisions that arrive after combat has begun automatically move into the reserves. If the general determines that there is enough combat width left to get them in the front line, then they have a small chance each hour to reinforce and move from the reserves to the main combat line. This chance can be increased by high division speed, researching radio, adding a signal company, and through some doctrine abilities. The last piece to the combat puzzle includes the information shown at the top of the combat window. You will see information here about how air units are affecting the combat. If you or your opponent have tactical or combat air support bombers on ground support missions, they can directly do damage to the enemy divisions. That damage will show up in this top area. So there you have it. Your divisions will meet, and every hour of the game they attempt to shoot each other using the formula we described earlier. Any shots that hit reduce the opposing division's organization and strength. As strength goes down, combat performance in the battle decreases. When the organization hits zero, the division will retreat from the area. Once all divisions from a single side have retreated, the battle is over and the victor controls the territory. Next episode, we'll discuss how this information informs our division designs.